Hello everyone, it's Old Guardian here. Hearthstone's Europe Winter Playoffs are starting tomorrow and it's a clash between some of the best players in the game and everyone wants to succeed. While many of the players bring the established top archetypes to a competition like this, there are always some players who think that they can gain an edge by bringing something a little bit less expected. In this video, I'm going to take a look at 8 off meta decks that people are bringing to the top level of competition. The 8 decks that I'm going to present here will be Hot Tools, Fatigue Priest, Tarsis, Megatune Druid, Switzis, Big Spell Mage, Vipers and Kolmari, Shatterbox Shaman, Switzis and Yorks, Control Warrior, Trex, Quest Warlock, Tarsis, Megatune Warlock, and Rendman's Death Rattle Paladin. So let's dive right in. When you hear the word Control Priest nowadays, you might immediately start thinking of Shadow Reaper and Duin and Mind Blast. Yeah, that's control, face control. However, some people are actually playing control decks still. Maybe the control decks nowadays can be called fatigue decks to distinguish them from the less apparent control decks that people are nowadays playing. So Hatul is bringing this fatigue priest into the competition. So it is a Dragon Priest, obviously, running the full Priest removal package. Double Duskbreaker, double Mass Hysteria, double Psychic Scream. And yeah, there is a Shadowy Branduin in this deck as well. Shadowy Branduin, after all, it can both deal some damage and it can serve as removal, but there are no Mind Blasts. Instead, this deck is ready to go long. There's an Archbishop Benedictus here, to ensure that this deck will never lose in a fatigue battle. And there's also an Azalina Soul Thief to grab some resources from your opponent if you happen to run out of your own. The defensive package of the deck extends far beyond all the usual removers and even pyromancers and includes two copies of Giggling Inventor. A deck that you would really experiment with on your own risk if you were to take this to the ladder. By the way, all the deck codes are in the description, so if you really want to take any of these decks out for a try, you can grab the code right there. I suppose bringing Druid kind of already qualifies you as off meta. And while Tarsis Megatoon Druid is not anything truly special in that regard, because these types of Megatoon Druids are somewhere on the ladder right now as well, it's still an archetype that you don't see every day. The deck is a very fast cycle build. You just cycle, cycle, cycle through your deck. You have stuff like Pyromancer, Acolyte of Pain. Even Bark Skin makes an appearance, giving Minion a little bit of health, giving the Druid a little bit of armor. See lots of zero mana spells, so you can get really big Pyromancer, Acolyte type of combos. And you can also cycle a ton with the Gadgets and Auctioneer. Ultimately, your goal is to empty your hand, empty your deck, empty your board, and finally have just three cards in your hand. Megatune, Innervate and Naturalize. Then you play Megatune for 10 mana, you play Innervate to gain 11th mana and you naturalize your Megatune and boom, that's a win. Switz is bringing this extremely removal heavy big spell mage list. Not only does it run polymorphs and all the spells that you usually see, dragons, furies, blizzards, meteors, flame strikes. It also has two copies of Voodoo Doll in it and two Doomsayers. So this deck is there to kill stuff. Just probably not your opponent's hero. More like everything that they can play and everything they can even imagine playing in any alternative reality. And as a final hurrah, it also includes Hexlord Malacras. Valkyrie add a copy of your opening hand to your hand, except this card. So if you find yourself running out of resources, then Hexlord just might come out to save you. Just hope you don't get comboed down if you play this deck. But when it comes to removal power, this deck, you just put in every removal card available to your class and that's cool. Very interesting take. And here is a deck list that is so long that it doesn't actually even fit on my screen. I have to scroll down to show you that the Shudderwalk is there indeed. But this is no OTK Shudderwalk deck. This is actually a Control Shaman that Viper and Colmaria are bringing to the tournament that just has Shudderwalk out there as a way to refill. 
gain a bunch of resources because Shadow Rock gains a ton of battle cries with this deck. It gives you an elemental, it buffs up your deck, it makes your nest spell cast twice, it removes the opponent's weapon, it gains taunt and divine shield possibly, it can give you some taunt minions, it can make your next spell target multiple targets, it can give you a copy if you have something on the board, it can shuffle an Unger pack into your deck, it can return any spells you cast the previous turn to your hand, and it can deal loads, loads, and loads of AoE. I wonder what will happen if this one is going to meet up with that big spell mage, because this is some hefty removal power. AoE after AoE, spells after spells, discovered spells, copied spells, new spells, multiple Ungaro packs. If you like control, then what's there not to like? On a more traditional note, European players have always loved their fatigue and control warriors, and Swiss and York do not disappoint. They bring the dead man's hand warrior to the competition once again. This time with just one copy of Dead Man's Hand, typically one copy of Dead Man's Hand is enough to win a fatigue battle, although seeing some of these other of meta decks that people are bringing, I really don't know if that's the case this time. It's a deck that has a ton of removal, ton of board control, some rush minions, some weapon removal, and of course Dr. Boom, some Omega Assembly, so you can also turn into this mech overlord and try to overwhelm your opponent and some power with Geosculptor Yip and the Lich King at the top end. So not a pure fatigue build, but more of a fatigue control hybrid. This is also the day that Blizzard has been waiting for. Blizzard has been waiting for this day for years. Lakari Sacrifice is being brought to a tournament. May finally done it. Maybe there are so many discard cards that have been printed that Lakari Sacrifice is actually viable. I highly doubt that though, but Trek has faith, and he is bringing this Control Discard Warlock into the tournament. So you have approximately 1 million cards in this deck that discard other cards, so everything just gets discarded, but if you happen to discard your checklick 100 times, you don't really mind, then you have 100 checklicks. If you just hit the right discards, who knows, you might be able to cycle specific cards infinitely with your Soul Warden. And there is even a Mojo Master Zihi in the deck to deny some combo plays. Can the infinite tree twos win games? We will see tomorrow. There are three Megatoon Warlocks in the tournament, and many of them, well, all of them are really interesting. I picked up Tarsis to feature because I really, really love the fact that this version has Corpse Takers and it has GD Angle Biters. And I love GD Angle Biter. This is like one of the most fun cards there can be, but unfortunately, one that hasn't really found real use. I mean, where do you really put this in and why? But in this deck, well, it activates lifesteal for Corpse Taker, and it's a cheap minion and you can just throw it down and you want to cycle through your deck pretty quickly anyway, because ultimately it is a Megatoon Warlock. You want to play two copies of Galvanizer while you have Megatoon in hand, and that will discount the Megatoon down to 8 mana, which will allow you to play Blood Bloom after Megatoon, and then finally a Cataclysm. So all minions are destroyed, your hand is discarded. All you have to do before you get to do that is that you need to empty your deck. Cataclysm doesn't empty your deck, so you have to draw your entire deck. You can have 10 cards in hand, and you can still get to activate the Megatoon, thanks to Cataclysm discarding those useless cards out of your hand, but your deck you have to be able to draw. And this deck, this deck does it really fast. There's a ton of cycle in this. It's really interesting to see how Megatoon Warlocks are evolving. Xerius, for example, is bringing a Megatoon Warlock to the same tournament that's a Control Warlock with one Galvanizer and one Dark Pact. So it discounts the Megatoon down to 9 and then it Dark Pacts the Megatoon. But then you would have to empty your hand before that, so it's a slow deck that's trying to really play a control game and then when everyone is in fatigue and everyone is out of cards then it just says oh by the way I win the game. How reliable is that against combo decks I'm not completely convinced but this Tarsis version much faster 
tons of cycle, some fun lifesteal things going on. I really like it. People occasionally ask me, have I found any use for the immortal prelate? And I have to say that no, I have had a bit of a hard time with the card. But here, Renmen is bringing a Detrettle Paladin that actually features Immortal Prelate as one of its cards. Just one other way to avoid fatigue and get to do some nice things with your steeds and stuff. But other than that, this is a Detrettle Paladin. It has Mechano Eggs, it tutors for those Mechano Eggs with the Meat Wagon, it can cube those Mechano Eggs, it can magnetize stuff on those Mechano Eggs, and then it can resurrect those Mechano Eggs and the a dates that have popped out of them and hit wall face. So a faster, actually a tempo swing based control paladin build. But still a control paladin build. There's still Uther, there's still Shervala. It is still a control deck, just one with a win condition and an immortal prelate on top. If any of these off meta decks looked interesting to you, all the deck codes are down in the description. The games themselves start tomorrow, so then we're going to find out if any of these are able to find any success. Even if they don't, they might still be fun to play. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed the show, please click the like button and subscribe to my channel for more.